everybody, this is Chuck, and I appreciate you stopping by my shop for another Screwy Tuesday. I'm a little rushed on this one, I'm going to take you for a handheld around here just to show you, but uh, I thought this might be an interesting subject. A travel dial. Trav a dial. The, uh, got some paperwork here on it. My good friend Carl, um, he had the paperwork on it. And I thought I would share this with you. The travel dial is an instrument for measuring on machine tools. And it's, a, it's, a, it's prior to DROs. I have them on my machine and I'll show you. Um, I do on my Monarch right here. I do have a DRO and I'm very spoiled. And of course my mill has a DRO. And uh, sometimes I can't even believe that I ran my mill without a DRO. But uh, I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, it'd be a quick one, just kind of an educational thing, and I'm here for your entertainment also. Um, to move on, um, here in my shop, if you don't mind going for a little handheld ride, um, I will show you what's been going on here that's got me a little bit jammed. This weekend, my Granddaughter was playing volleyball, so as a good grandpa, I definitely have to attend that and watch it. Um, and here's a quick clip of a uh, hay man. So that hey man is for a YouTube buddy. Uh, he called me up. He says, hey, I need to uh, get this done. Can you help me out here? And it was nine, uh, four pieces, nine inches long, uh, three sixteenths inch wide slot, three eighths inch deep to, on both edges of the half inch bar. Um, so it was just back forth, back forth, you know, taking a hundred thousandths of a depth cut on each pass. Um, and running uh, about, I was running a little conservative first at 1,000 RPM, and I kicked it up to uh, 1,700. Uh, as you know, carbide doesn't mind uh, speed, and uh, just motored them out. So got that done. And uh, I've been packaging stuff up for the meet and greet, which is going to come this Saturday. Um, really looking forward to that, seeing a lot of YouTube buddies and a lot of just people that love machinists and tools. Um, so that's going to be a good time and looking forward to that. I'll try to get some video of that. All right, if you're still with me, we'll go for a quick handheld and then we'll go to the lathe and we'll talk about travel dials. Okay, here's my shop dog, Howie. Huh? Can you sneeze? Oh, jeez. No, no bark. Sneeze. Uh, so, hey, a Christmas tree in my shop. There's, there's the top of it. Christmas tree in my shop. Why is there a Christmas tree in my shop? My wife purchased this one. It's a fake tree. And uh, it's actually a really good looking tree. And the lights didn't work. And she played with it for, oh, three or four weeks. Um, it was a, a Goodwill special for 40 bucks. These sell for like $700. And uh, that's why it was there at Goodwill. The lights didn't work. Finally talked her into cutting all the lights off. So her and I have been out here in the shop together. And we probably got about three hours into cutting the wiring off of this tree um, and all the lights. And then she can go ahead and put a regular regular lights around the tree. So actually, I actually have been having a lot of fun with my wife in the shop. Over here is the underside of my son's Mercedes. And we'll walk under here a little dark, but uh, he's just in the process of putting headers back on it. 
to get it smogged, and uh, I've been helping him. So we actually got all the system back up inside the car today. He's got most of the work done. He's been working at it hard, and uh, I, I try to help him out as much as I can. And we'll walk over to the wood shop here real quick. Hang with me, guys. So over in the wood shop, turn the lights on. I've been uh, starting to uh, rummage through the shop and putting together uh, some items for the meet and greet and swap meet. So uh, got a box of drill bits there, a tenth indicator, a vise, router, air compressor, all sorts of stuff. All right, let's get back over to the lathe and uh, we will talk about travel dials. Let's go, Howard. Come on. So what we have here in the on the surface plate is another travel dial that I have that's not on my machines, but it has a mounting bracket. As you can see, it's this is just a spare that I have that's filthy. And it mounts on a dovetail on the mounting bracket. There's set screws to lock it in place. And there's this unit here that actually, if you can see there on the bottom, can you can screw and adjust it where it rides on the dovetail. The unit itself, they read in the thousandths, and they have a dial here that reads in inches, tenths of an inch. So as you run the unit, you can see the bottom dial moves. So it's really an infinite reading in the sense of a distance as this one-tenth dial goes, adds up in inches, and it goes, uh, what is it, five, six inches? And then of course it would repeat. Um, this one's missing the glass bezel and you can set, you know, you can set your, if you're on a part there, so I'm rubbing the wheel there, but if you're set on a part, you know, you can set your zero, and you can set your zero here, which was down below here, so you'd set your zero there. This unit's in bad repair, but you'd set your zero, zero, and be able to go, and then as the unit moves, it moves. The, um, the wheel here is uh, what's the term? It's, it's not a flat wheel. It actually has a radius face, and that's part of how the unit is set on the rail that it reads on, both in attitude and parallelism, or perpendicular to the rail, I should say. Also, you'll notice there's two lugs here that are precision, and these two lugs are what you set up the attitude of the unit on the rail and you gotta set this up to within a tenth to make sure that the unit as it as the rail as it rides on the rail that it's reading correctly so uh, let me turn you around and we'll uh, take a look at uh, the setup on my lathe so I actually have two units here on my lathe I got one for the traverse right to left and then I have one on the carriage for back and forth and the one on the bed of course rides on the end edge of the bed it it doesn't have to be a completely precision surface but it definitely has to be a clean flat surface for the unit to run on and you can see I have a dial indicator set up there right now and we'll, we'll try to zoom in and show you and the same, so on the cross light here, I ended up having to add a rail on it for the unit to read. Let me uh, see if we can get you in on this and just uh, give you a little show. So right now I have both the units set at zero. If I was to move, 
So I'm moving actually, oh, <laughs> moving the, <laughs> come on, Charlie, moving the cross slide and wondering why the carriage isn't showing. All right, so now let's try moving the carriage. So I'm going to move the carriage and you'll notice the indicator on the travel dial is moving. So if we go a hundred thousandths, we have a hundred thousandths on both indicators and of course is as, as we go further and further even though this indicator drops off doesn't read anymore this indicator of course is going to read it's going to complete continue to read and the 100 scale here will continue to read pretty nice setup i've uh, it's really been handy on the on the uh, unit because you can set your zero and and know your feed where you're going on the, let me see if I can switch you here a little bit. May have to go handheld, or you, or you can just believe me. Um, so moving the uh, cross slide, I'm going to come back to zero on it. So I've got zero. I'm at zero zero. Where are you? Zero there and zero back there. Now if I move twenty thousandths on my cross slide dial there, the travel dial only reads ten thousandths. Er? Wait a minute, Charlie. You just said you moved twenty thousandths. And it only reads ten thousandths back there. <coughs> Excuse me. That's because of the radius, right? The lathe dial here, when I dial in twenty thousandths, it's showing me that I'm going to cut twenty thousandths, but in reality, I'm cutting ten thousandths. Ten thousandths on this side, ten thousandths on the other side. It's round. The travel dial in the back is reading radius. It's knowing that the carriage only moved half of what my dial shows on the lathe. <coughs> can be a little confusing, but uh, once you understand it, the nice thing about having it on the on the uh, cross slide here is um, accuracy, because if you can see right here. I'm on the 20 thousandths, and you'll have to believe me here, but I'm going to go, and I'm moving, there's, uh, there's, there's 5 thou, and there is 10 thou, and there is 15 thou, and there's over 20, 25, and it's just going to engage now at almost 30,000th and now my travel dial is my travel dial is moving so there's that much backlash in the cross fleet screw here and having the travel dial over there i know exactly where it is i don't have to worry about what what my dial reads on the uh, lathe hope that's not too confusing let me stop here and we'll finish up on this. Okay, well, if you're still with me, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm not going to give you a, a ton of uh, information here, but uh, I do have the install instructions and I have a, another pamphlet that has instructions on travel dials. Uh, if you would like a copy, you can email me at outsidescrewball at gmail.com be happy to share it with you and just a quick note here um, travel dial is a calibrated it when calibrated significantly reduces errors the travel dial can be calibrated on the machine because the patented gauge wheel is crowned that's the word I was looking for earlier um, travel dial let's see by changing the tilt angle between the travel dial dial and its base 
the effective circumference of the wheel is altered. That's where you start to get your precision. This allows you to adjust the readout to accurately measure the true motion of the workpiece and thus achieve very precise measurement accuracies. And they go into the whole instructions. Uh, I remember Keith Fenner had one of these on his quill, on his mill, uh, back in the day. I uh, always wanted to put one on one of mine, but never did. I actually enjoy the setup I have now. Um, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's call it quits there. It's a quick uh, Screwy Tuesday. I hope you found it informative and uh, entertaining. And uh, as always, I appreciate your time for stopping by. And we'll see you uh, next Tuesday. That's the goal. Thanks again, and take care, everybody.